Once your child's image enters the online ecosystem, it's no longer yours. And the part they don't tell parents is you can't take it back. Hey mom, hey dad, it's me, Ella. Well, a digital version of me, just a bit older. Amazing what technology can do these days, isn't it? All you need are a couple of pictures, like the ones you share on social media, where they can be taken and used by everybody. You post a photo of your kid smiling at a birthday party or hugging the family dog. Within seconds, that image can be scraped, cloned, and turned into a weapon. No hacking or dark web involved, and for free. Maybe the beginning of a horrible future. A future where my identity can be stolen just like that. Where I can go to prison for things that I would never do. Imagine my credit score being destroyed, Dad. Or my voice copied to scam you, Mom. Mom, I'm in trouble. I, I need you to send me money, please. And I certainly don't want this. Right now, anyone with a phone can type this one word into Google and find dozens of free AI tools that can strip clothes off any photo in less than 30 seconds. I will get you up to speed on the risks, how this scam works, and tell you exactly how to fight it, including through a really creative loophole in copyright law. If you're a parent, a teacher, a sibling, or even Taylor Swift, who's been a victim of this as an adult, this video is for you. Stanford Cyber Policy Center analyzed over 3,000 Telegram channels and found that AI-generated child sexual abuse material is doubling every 90 days. And it's showing up in classrooms too. A recent survey from Thorne, who is one of the most credible authorities on tech-enabled child exploitation, found that one in eight young people personally know someone who's been targeted by deep fake nudes. So how does the scam work? There's a playbook behind these fakes and it's terrifyingly simple. Step one, harvest. Any public photo works, a team roster, a dance recital post, and even a profile picture. Zoom in on faces, erase the backgrounds, and just like that, they've got clean training data. Step two, generate. Open source diffusion models like Stable Diffusion or Focus can run on a gaming laptop. A user drags the cropped face into a folder, clicks merge, and the software bakes your child's face onto an existing adult body. The results are very realistic, even at lower resolution. Step three, distribute. Now, most predators don't sell these images. They swap them in private Discord servers or Telegram channels, earning reputation points for each new victim. Once the image leaks, Takedown is a game of whack-a-mole. Files are rehosted on cloud drives that shuffle every 12 hours. Links auto-refresh to stay ahead of detection. The average fake is reposted 550 times before it ever disappears, if it ever does. And if that doesn't make your stomach turn, it should. And if you're thinking, well, I've locked my profile, so I'm safe. I'm sorry to say you aren't. Most of these images come from public third-party sources you can't control. School websites, newsletters, PTA galleries, even cached Google results. And many come with embedded metadata. Names in the file name, schools tagged in captions, even GPS coordinates buried in the image data. So without realizing it, parents are uploading perfect instructions for predators and AI models alike. So parents, teachers, and even teens, are your schools talking about this? Because based off of what I've seen, most aren't. Here's the part that makes this different from any other privacy risk we've faced. AI isn't just copying faces anymore, it's learning them. With just a handful of photos, and in some cases, one single image, Generative AI models can recreate your child's face, body, and voices in ways that are almost impossible to distinguish from real life. AI image generators are trained on massive data sets, like this one, containing nearly 6 billion images scraped from the internet. Blogs, Instagram posts, old Flickr albums you forgot about, a family Christmas card, the infamous 10-year challenge on Facebook. Yeah, that's exactly what you thought it was. And photos of children are also in these data sets. Even over a thousand instances of known CSAM were found in public AI training data sets like this one, meaning some of the same AI tools promoted as creativity playgrounds were in fact trained on illegal content. 
Once these models have this data, there is no delete button. These systems don't unlearn your child's face. You can delete the post, lock down your profile, even shut down your account. It doesn't matter. Once it's fed in, I personally do not know of any way to pull it back out. Now, tech companies love to reassure us that they've built protections. They say their AI systems automatically block any prompting involving minors, nudity, or explicit content. And that sounds really comforting until you see how laughably easy it is to break. So platforms talk about safety, politicians talk about regulation, but the truth is that these guardrails are paper thin. Anyone can bypass them on the internet. But just imagine locally run models, meaning everything's running on someone's laptop offline without all the extra annoyance. That's how most of them tend to do this. Now here's what's even scarier. The platforms can't actually stop this. Not because they don't care, but because the technology outpaces their defense. Platforms scan for known illegal images using a hash database, which works like digital fingerprints, but AI-generated defakes are brand new pixels every time. There's no match, no fingerprint, nothing to flag, so they slip right past. Schools and platforms also treat defakes like a legal gray zone because the face is real, but the body is synthetic. Most platforms argue it doesn't technically count as explicit image of a minor. That puts it in a legal gray zone, and thanks to Section 230 of US law, companies are protected from liability. And if you're watching this from around the world, every major country has a similar law. The response from both schools and platforms is slow or non-existent. Parents are forced to chase removals themselves while the images keep spreading like wildfire. So this is the part you need to know most. How do you protect yourself and your kids when the system fails you? The first piece of advice, if you or your child is a victim of this, use copyright as your secret weapon. The laws are really broken right now. Platforms and prosecutors often argue it's not real, which leaves families with almost no legal ground to stand on. But there's a loophole copyright law. Even if the fake body isn't yours, you own the original photo of your child. You can file a copyright takedown and force platforms to act. And it works. In a recent audit on X, researchers uploaded deepfakes and filed takedowns two ways. The first was reported as non-consensual nudity, 0% removed after three weeks. The second, reported as copyright infringement, 100% removed within 24 hours. So yes, platforms will protect a company's intellectual property faster than your child's face, use that to your advantage. The second thing you should do is lock down your metadata before posting. Most parents don't realize that photos carry hidden data, GPS coordinates, file names, timestamps. AI scrapers use that metadata to link your child's image to their school, their name, and even your home address. Yes, that's real. So before posting, turn off location services in your phone's camera settings. Strip metadata before uploading using free tools like Metafo app or Exif Purge. Blur faces or use emojis on any public images of your child. And once a photo is public, assume it's training data. So minimize what you give away. The third thing you should do is monitor where you or your child's photos are being used. Check proactively. My favorite tool is called PimEyes, where you can track where a face shows up online. Be careful, the results can be really disturbing, but you can use reverse image search with PimEyes or with Google Lens. You can also set up Google Alerts for your child's name, username, or unique phrases in captions. It's not foolproof, but it can give you an early warning if images are being misused. Four, you can use the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children Take It Down tool, which is a free service that allows you to upload the original photo or video of your child, and the system creates a hash, which is a unique digital fingerprint to track it. Major platforms like Meta, TikTok, Reddit, Pornhub, OnlyFans, and more automatically block and remove matches. It's free, secure, and backed by federal funding. And you don't have to be a US citizen to use it. Five, know where the law actually protects you. Prosecutors often have to prove intent to harass, which is a bar so high that many cases just stall out. Talk to your school district, your local representative, push for updated legislation. The Take It Down Act, which was introduced in 2024, is one example of federal efforts to close these gaps, but we still have a long way to go. And this last tip is uncomfortable, but it's essential. Talk to your kids. Teens are now both targets and users of these tools, and the fastest growing source of non-consensual deepfakes is their other teen peers. So keep conversations simple, 
but honest. Explain what deepfakes are and why they're dangerous. Teach them to never share private images, even with friends. Help them understand that anything posted publicly could live forever and likely will live forever. Your child needs to know what AI can do before someone weaponizes it against them. I can sit here and share stats and tools all day, but I want to know what you're seeing. Have you come across AI generated fakes? Do you know anyone that this has happened to? Leave a comment and tell me what you're worried about and what you want me to cover next. Because the more we talk about this, the harder it is for people to ignore. As always guys, if you can please like and subscribe so more people can see this message, it would mean so much to me and it would help a lot more people. What you share online is like a digital footprint that will follow me around for the rest of my life. I'm telling you this because I know you love me and would never do anything to harm me. So please, mom, please, dad, protect my virtual privacy.